from the morning reading. SPX rallies after trading lower. JPM higher after earnings per share in pre-market. Intel lower after hours on earnings per share. All nine sectors moved higher on Thursday. XLE, XLV, XLK were the strongest sectors, while XLP was the weakest sector. Oil rose. Breath strengthened as advancers led decliners 2.07 to 1 on the New York Stock Exchange and 2.18 to 1 on the NASDAQ. Uh, the SPX and NDX found support early Thursday morning as short term bottoms were formed and prices rebounded sharply. 410 stocks in the S&P 500 rose on Thursday, 28 out of 30 stocks in the Dow Jones rose with oil stocks CVX and XOM leading. Quite a change from the day before. Hello, this is Stephen Harris, the head trader from Falcon Global, where we model best practices for investors, traders, and day traders from entry to exit every trading day. In this daily video, I'll provide my opinion and insights of current market trends, market timing, volatility, and hedge risk levels for the upcoming day for the key U.S. financial markets. It is 5.56 a.m. Central Time, and I am recording this in preparation for the market day of January the 15th, 2016. Full disclaimers are at the end of the video, but be aware that this is for educational purposes only, and only you are responsible for the investing or trading decisions that you make. So let's dive into the key highlights on today's market report. First of all, we have a big, big, big down overnight. And in fact, um, on the S&P futures, we're down at the time of this cut over 30 points, about 1.6%. Russell futures down even more, 1.77%. NASDAQ, the weakest, down 1.84%. And the Dow is actually holding up the best, 1.58% drop. Crude oil crushed, down 4.48%. Euro up about 0.3%, bonds up about two-thirds of a percent, as is gold up about 0.7%. Overseas action is not any better. China down 3.5%, Hong Kong down 1.5%, Japan down half a percent, Germany down 1%, and United Kingdom down 1.27%. In terms of macroeconomic activity for today in the U.S., we have a big slight both pre-market and during market hours. Core retail sales, PPI, retail sales, Empire State Manufacturing, FOMC member Dudley speaking, capacity utilization rate and industrial production, followed by preliminary University of Michigan consumer sentiment and a couple other minor reports associated with that. So um, as you can see, there's a full slate of day uh, on the macro report side. So anything can happen during the course of the day as those reports are digested. In terms of volatility, we continue to uh, be quite volatile, really, but not an awful lot of relative fear given the amount of price movement that we've had or the amount of weakness. We have short-term VIX at a 25.57. I imagine that is going to pop this morning. And indeed, the current um, VIX, well, it won't open until the cash opens. Let's see if we can. We'll take a look at the chart here on the VIX futures in just a second. Uh, standard deviation move was put in yesterday. Um, so we have back-to-back -back standard deviation moves with a two standard deviation down move followed by a one standard deviation up move. It would seem that we're going to then follow that with a two or even um, perhaps a one, but probably another two standard deviation move to the downside. In terms of the short-term VIX, we got that at over 25. We have SKU also very, very elevated, coming in just below 140. IV percentiles are middle of the pack at 48 for the S&P, 48 for the Russell, 46 for the NASDAQ, and 50 for the Dow. Let's go ahead and pop into those charts. And I went to the futures contract because we had so much overnight movement. And if we had just looked at the SPX, we would get a very different feel. This feels quite bullish. It's like, oh my, there's a reversal in play here, a big bounce. You know, or is this the bottom? Were we close enough to these prior supports? This is the bottom. We need to start, you know, perhaps 
um, scaling into some positions that we wanted to get, and um, off we go, and all is good in the world. Well, instead, if you look at the overnight futures, you see this picture here, and let's dial into this area of uh, most concern. You had the big two standard deviation down move where you had the breakdown. You'd had something of a potential uh, reversal set up that was confirmed. You could have even said that um, perhaps we're getting ready to break that diagonal resistance and um, kind of set up for a potential bottom combination. But no, that was invalidated right away and significantly lower lows. That then, of course, was followed by, you know, a, a big um, a reversal pattern here, big one standard deviation up move, and yet what happens to that? It's totally enveloped by last night's action, and as it stands right now, uh, you know, all these um, bottoms here, not counting wicks, are equal right now. So it'll be very interesting to see what happens when the cash open gets here. We do have some macroeconomic reports that are going to come in between now. It's only 6 o'clock a.m. Central Time and the, and the cash open. So about 7.30 uh, Central Time, we'll have a number of macroeconomic reports coming in. And then, uh, of course, the cash participation. So we've got a lot to happen yet. But when that all does come in, do we come down? Do we visit these lows here? And uh, once we finish with those lows, do we go down to the 1831 August low? So um, that's the primary support. This is a critical area of support. And then it's backstopped by the big wick action of the August low. And um, does that come into play? If those two break, then this gets much, much uglier, uh, likely. Because you see here, while we do have a small wick here with a backstop a few points lower, uh, so I guess we could say we have two backstops. But once we get past that, then we go probably into full out bear market going for the 20% down or perhaps even greater potential. So um, this is not the time to be trying to pick at uh, long positions. If you're a novice trader, most retail traders should be standing aside on the initiation of anything in this kind of environment. This is the catching the falling knife kind of scenario where things can really get ugly and really start moving. And what you hope to buy something at a discount suddenly turns into not quite a discount. What looks like um, positive delta all of a sudden turns into very positive delta as your short gets eaten up that you have down below this market. In terms of the Dow, very similar picture. In Q, similar picture here. What's different is the Russell. The Russell is decidedly weaker and having already you know, with the prior action, uh, came in quite a bit lower. Let's get back to dailies here, make sense of this. Um, we had a little bit of that bullish harami yesterday, but that's been totally enveloped now. And we're just, we're out here. And, and there is no real support anywhere nearby. I mean, if you start putting at these little bull flag patterns and calling that a support area. Uh, to me, that's a pretty good stretch. That's not really a swing bottom. The way I think of it is, is like this one here, where we've had a made, you know, an intermediate term swing bottom. These are kind of just short term trading patterns and, and not really one to point to as significant support. So Russell probably will find support not by some sort of horizontal pattern or even fib extension, but more likely just because of sheer exhaustion and a value proposition. So kind of keep that in mind. Let's go to the VIX futures. Um, so far, it would seem to me that while we're certainly getting quite elevated, we're up over 25, and, and that just doesn't happen that much. In fact, let's go to the weeklies here. You know, we just don't have that many examples of being in this area. You had the August lows where you got up over 30 for a brief period of time. It would seem that we're heading back for another similar spike. 
at the same time, it just seems like um, we should have had more pronounced, coming from lower, going higher, more pronounced change with this kind of weakness. Uh, it's elevated, but not as fearful as you might think. So we continue to think that this might not be a huge move down, um, but we'll continue to watch as the situation develops because this is uh, obviously, you know, a major, major pullback. In terms of bonds, let's look at that. So where is the money going? Well, a good bit of it has been going to bonds. But while bonds, again, up near the upper part of its range, has not, you know, had some sort of huge breakout. You know, this isn't like um, back last April yet where we were running up to the 166 and change area. Still, right now we're up, we're pushing towards 159 and change in the overnight. So where could we get to if the broad market gets down to those lows? We're probably up here around the 161 area. On TLT, if you're trading that, we're probably you know closing in on 129. So kind of keep that in perspective. But the money's likely to go towards the bonds the long bond specifically as uh, safe haven status is seek. Okay, that's enough on that. Let's go to our daily report. We continue to have a very, very ugly daily report. Phase by the break of horizontal diagonal support. In terms of portfolio investor posture, market in correction, and I believe this is our seventh trading session, the longest run of market and correction that we had had in 2015 was eight trading sessions, if I remember correctly. So this is getting to be quite a um, significant event, and it is also lasting longer than many have, ha have, uh, have lasted this last year, including the August breakdown. Accumulation distribution score on the S&P did improve slightly to a D minus, NASDAQ also to a D minus, so still quite poor in their ratings. You heard in the morning reading, I shared some breadth readings, but still bottom line in relative um, purposes here, this is very, very negative. GMI index, zero out of six, sell signal has been in place since the middle of December. That author remains very happily 100% in cash. In terms of decision point, you see a sea of red arrows and frankly starting to form a real stack here. So when you put the consensus of all this together, uh, you have to say that while we're still in the range, that we're still a market in transition, but we are decidedly bearish in our posture. And until proven otherwise, should trade as if the market is in a bear mode. Um, if we break down through these last couple lines of support, um, then this will um, become far more serious and ominous. In terms of the intermediate term market posture, very bearish with the bearish sentiment line. So we expect those bearish moves to be longer and more pronounced and the bull moves to be shorter and basically just setting up the next leg down until proven otherwise. And in fact, if you're a novice trader, uh, the wait until the hedge warning status drops or we have an IBD move to market and um, confirmed uptrend or we have um, our intermediate term market posture turn bullish until you see some real strong signs that this has uh, really put in a bottom. You should treat any any kind of bounce, just like yesterday. That looked like a big bounce. It looked wonderful. Everybody was kind of excited. But uh, it just served up uh, another round of shorts to be loaded up and take this down for another leg. So until you see those signs, and we never had any of those signs yesterday or in the last bear flag pattern, uh, until you actually see those signs firm up, uh, probably best to wait and keep your powder dry, stay very, very patient in this kind of a market and not get run over in a night falling down. In terms of intermediate term market posture, you see all four indices are severely bearish. This is as ugly as it can get. There are no bullish clusters present, no signs of reversal present. Hedge warning status remains that level three. That is that crash warning. That is the potential risk uh, is elevated and that the um, 
potential for the market to fall and fall very hard with large delta and large vega moves is very much present. This is not a prediction of how far or indeed that it'll even fall a significant distance, um, but it is saying that the conditions are present for a significant fall. In terms of specific minor warnings, we had the market in decline. The VIX futures up over 18, market in correction, VIX ratio warning did fire once again. The SKU up over 135, so about a 12% probability of a two standard deviation move. Current week out expected move has come down a little bit from where it was, but um, at the time uh, the, uh, that I looked this up yesterday, it was currently sitting at a 56 for the week out. New highs, new lows, another 1,000 new low day on the New York Stock Exchange. So I believe that is now three out of the last four sessions. So very, very ugly. All five key intermarket risk aversion indicators are flagging as risk off. Fear and greed index in the extreme fear area at a 17. All special opinions are outside the acceptable window to initiate new positions for novice traders. And really in terms of short to intermediate to even long-term bullish trades uh, should probably all be held in reserve on your watch list, looking for your setups, but holding back the powder until a more appropriate entries. More aggressive traders uh, you know, may seek to take advantage of these elevated premium conditions that we are currently having, but just know that you need to have plenty of trading capital available because outsized delta and vega moves are very much possible. In terms of sector specific, it's a sea of red. Only utilities holding up at, with any kind of um, you know substance. And of course, that's the most defensive sector. So that doesn't tell you much about being a bull. Uh, in terms of utilities, it is note to, uh, of note to see just how that is holding up. Uh, if you look at some of the most important components in the XLU, you generally see, you know, um, they're up about two, maybe even three percent. Doesn't sound like a lot, but if you're up even one percent in the face of a market in that same time frame, perhaps being down by seven percent, you know, that's that's a, like almost ten percent spread between the two. So. While everything can go down in a real bear market, including utilities, it will not necessarily be positive. It will certainly most likely stand up much, much better. And of course, it pays a nice dividend, those kinds of things. So it's often a place where people park money as are consumer staples, uh, not quite uh, as strong at being able to hold up, but it will probably hold up far better. So when you start to see those bottoms, those kinds of sectors, you know, maybe of interest. The other place, of course, is bonds, the long bonds, and REITs, uh, like IYR, are places where people will find relative safety in bear markets if that's what we develop into. In terms of percent change, you see yesterday was a big day. and It was very much about the energy play, also healthcare, information technology. You know, it looked like this high beta stuff to a large degree was up here at the top. And, uh, and driving this performance. But um, that's the kind of things that happen in bearish markets. You get these rip your face off bull days and keep in mind that the largest bull movements are often in the midst of bear markets. So uh, this can be um, disconcerting for those who are trying to figure out where the bottom is and they keep seeing this kind of price action. They think the bottom is in. They're not looking for more objective measures or more confirmed measures, and they turn around the next morning, and like today, they see everything just evaporate in front of them as the market legs down to another level. That should be enough for today. We're almost 20 minutes, so we're going to go ahead and wrap this up. If you find what you're getting from here is useful to your trading, like us on YouTube, subscribe to us on the YouTube channel, perfectly free, and you'll get an update when content is posted. Retweet us to your Twitter followers, to your stock put followers, etc. I'll scroll through these next sections. If you want more information on some of these special offers, just follow the hyperlink to get the details.
Disclaimers, as always, hit the pause button if you need more time to review, and you see the hyperlink at the bottom for the full-fledged disclaimers. We'll see you back here on Tuesday morning for the Falcon Global Market Preview. Remember, Monday is a trade holiday with the Martin Luther King holiday.